part two of Do We Worship the Same God? How do we go about answering this question of whether we worship the same God? It might seem like a simple question, but actually it's not a simple question. You can't just go by the name. Uh, the word Allah comes from an Arabic expression which means the God. Allah is a Semitic term. Uh, it's a part of the Semitic language background and it's related to the Elo as in Elohim in Hebrew. They're related words. It's, it's just a, a very ancient Semitic term meaning God. And uh, the God became then the, the title apparently uh, for a particular God in the Arab pantheon. Uh, Muhammad's uh, father was called Abdullah, so slave of Allah. So uh, a, a god called the God or Allah was, uh, was worshipped um, in, in Arabia before Muhammad. And he then became identified as the only true God by Muhammad. But really it's not about the name. It's not about whether we call Allah Allah or call him God. It's about more than just the name. It's about what stands behind the name. And that's what I'm going to speak about. We also need to acknowledge that Arabic speaking Christians um, often call the God of the Bible Allah. So again, it's not about the name. Uh, in English, we call God, God. And that's a word that's come from Germanic tribes who use the word God to refer to deities like Thor and Odin and so on. They early Christians took the word God and applied it to the God of the Bible. So it's not about the actual term you use here. It's about what stands behind the term. Now, here is a question. Is accepting the Islamic teaching that we worship the same God a sign of tolerance and good faith, a sort of friendly disposition, or is it partial submission to Islam because you've accepted an Islamic doctrine? It is an Islamic doctrine that we worship the same God. It's one of those steps to convert someone to Christianity. So if you accept that, are you confessing Islam or are you being friendly and gracious and welcoming? That's a really important question to ask. I also want to state that there is only one God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And that's something that's very important to emphasize. If someone asks you that question, a Muslim asks you, well, there is only one God, isn't there? The creator of all things. So we're not debating about that at all. Now, um, it's interesting that sometimes uh, people have very different views about this. And John Chesworth, who was educating um, people working in missions in Africa, I think he's now based in the UK, um, he said that when they got people coming into their programs, they asked the students to make up their mind at the start. He said, this leads us to a dilemma that Christians involved in working amongst Muslim communities have to decide as they begin their work. Is the God of Christianity the same as the God of Islam? We don't tell students what view they should take, nor are they penalized in assignments and examinations for their view. The key issue is that the students make a decision as to what they believe, as it shapes the way in which they will relate to Muslims. Now, that's a sort of generous and inclusive approach to take, but the question is, um, will your view remain stable? I, I had a sort of practical working view that it was the same God, but maybe someone's view of that might change as time goes by. You can uh, develop different views if you understand the Quran better or study the Bible more. But that's an interesting that they, he took that view as a matter of policy in their training programs. There are different ways to answer this question. Uh, you could ask, do they act the same? Does does the God of the Bible and the God of the Quran, do they tend to act in the same way? And there are some inconsistencies there. For example, the God of the Bible introduced the stoning law for adultery and then Jesus seemed to abrogate it, you know, where he forgave the adulterous woman and told her to go. But then Muhammad brought it back in again. So how can that be that God introduces a law, gets rid of it, brings it back again? It's a sort of theological cha-cha. And so they seem to be in contradiction to each other. The God of the Quran says that the covenant with the Jews has been abrogated, but the God of the Bible says that he will never abrogate his love for the Jews or his faithfulness to them. So they seem to have some ways in which they act a bit differently. Do they teach the same things? That's a good question. Um, there's the issue of Trinitarian beliefs. If you believe Jesus is God, obviously Muslims don't believe that. Is that enough to answer the question? Or whether we worship the same God? Do they have the same attributes? Are they the same in their attributes? 
And it's important not just to look at some similarities, but to look, at, look for key differences as well. Uh, we um, have to acknowledge that Marcionism is not an option. Marcion was a theologian in the early, or a teacher in the church in the early centuries. <coughs> And he argued that the God of the Old Testament was different from the God of the New Testament. He developed a theology of two different gods. And that was rejected as a heresy in the early church. So it's not an option to say, oh, Muslims worship the God of the Old Testament, whereas we worship the God of Jesus. I mean, I sometimes hear people say that. It's complete crazy talk, crazy talk. Because um, the God of Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. His Bible was the Hebrew Bible. That was, his, that was the God that he spoke about. So Marcionism is just not going to work. Um, but it's well worth realizing that that's, that's something that's been dealt with a long time ago. It's also important to acknowledge that the God of the Bible and the God of the Quran have quite a few attributes in common. They're both the creator. They're both a merciful judge. Mercy might be understood somewhat differently, but that's a basically in general terms. They both engage in revelation, revealing uh, words to people. They also share the omnis, omnipotence, all power, omniscience, all knowledge, and omnipresence, everywhere present, although that is an issue I'd like to come back to, the question of the presence of God. So they share quite a lot in common. But you see, having some things in common is not enough to establish identity. There were two presidents of the United States called George Bush, and they both had a similar accent, uh, but they were quite different presidents, and you'd have to look for their, their, their differences to understand that they were different, not just look at the fact that they had similar names. A few similarities don't make identity. I mean, we share a lot of things in common. We have two eyes and two legs and two arms, and we all have hair and so on. Some of us more than others, and, uh, but you know, no listing of all those similarities will establish identity. Uh, you need to look more carefully and look for significant differences, particularly not trivial differences, but really significant differences. I'm going to focus on uh, six differences. These are differences that came to me through studying the Quran and the Bible and thinking about them in a deep way. They're differences that can be explained uh, uh, in both the New and the Old Testament, that is, their cat attributes of God, where the New and the Old Testament show consistency in the way they speak about God. So they're not a contrasting the Quran with the New Testament or the Quran with the Old Testament. We're contrasting the Quran with the whole of the Bible. We'll take a break there.